Welcome to episode 273 of the Selling Your Screenplay podcast. I'm Ashley Scott Myers, screenwriter and blogger over at sellingyourscreenplay.com. Today I'm interviewing screenwriter John Fusco. John has a film out on Netflix called The Highwaymen, starring Kevin Costner and Woody Harrelson. This is a script John wrote a while back and came close to getting it produced numerous times, and he finally found a home for it on Netflix. John has written such studio films as Young Guns and Hidalgo and many, many, many others. He's originally from Maine, so like many of us, he didn't grow up around Hollywood and kind of had to figure things out on his own. And we talk about his journey, kind of how he got to where he was and how he got this film, The Highwaymen, ultimately produced over on Netflix. So stay tuned for that interview. If you give this episode, if you think this episode is valuable, please help me out by giving me a review in iTunes or leaving a comment on YouTube or retweeting the podcast on Twitter or liking or sharing it on Facebook. These social media shares really do help spread word about the podcast, so they're very much appreciated. Any websites or links that I mention in the podcast can be found on my blog in the show notes. I also publish a transcript with every episode in case you'd rather read the show or look at something later on. You can find all the podcast show notes at www.sellingyourscreenplay.com slash podcast and then just look for episode number 273. If you want my free guide, How to Sell a Screenplay in Five Weeks, you can pick that up by going to sellingyourscreenplay.com slash guide. It's completely free. You just put in your email address and I'll send you a new lesson once per week for five weeks along with a bunch of bonus lessons. I teach the whole process of how to sell your screenplay in that guide. I'll teach you how to write a professional logline and query letter and how to find agents, managers, and producers who are looking for material. Really is everything you need to know to sell your screenplay. Just go to sellingyourscreenplay.com slash guide. So now let's get into the main segment. Today I'm interviewing screenwriter John Fusco. Here is the interview. Welcome John to the Selling Your Screenplay podcast. I really appreciate you coming on the show with me today. Hey Ashley, it's good. It's great to be with you. So to start out, maybe you can give us a quick overview of your background. Where did you grow up and how did you get interested in the entertainment business? Wow. Well, you know, I grew up in a, in a small blue-collar town in New England, and uh, you know, my father was a an auto salvage owner, so I was basically a, a junkyard kid. I describe it as a junkyard dog <laughs> <laughs> growing up. And um, but my dream from a very early age was to to write screenplays hmm. and and make movies. Um, it helped that. In one of the junk cars, I, in the trunk, I found a Super 8 camera, oh, wow. <laughs> and I, I always felt it was a message from the movie gods. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, um, I started writing and um, and shooting these Super 8 films at around 10, 11 years old, and it was a real dream. But um, it was I wasn't met with a lot of support or wow. encouragement because it was just so out there and so foreign um, to the community that that I grew up in. Sure. So I, I kind of, uh, in my teenage years, I, I uh, pivoted toward songwriting as an outlet for the creativity, connected with different bands, garage bands, and, and dropped out of high school, wound up on the road um, with these bands until I, I had this epiphany at one point out there that um, I never should have let go of that first dream. Mm -hmm. And I I remember making this decision on a long South Carolina highway in this this bus, this tour bus, that I was going to go back, get my GED, and I was going to pursue screenwriting or or die trying. Mm -hmm. And so what happened then? So you went back to school and then you, you got some sort of a degree, you stumbled into LA. What was that first break for you? Well, um, you know, after I got the the uh, GED, went back to night school, I got into a community college and just started, um, you know, I, I had never stopped writing. And that mm-hmm. was the thing, Ashley, that, you know, and I described those, you know, six years I spent on the road and hoboing and, and the kind of the hard times. That was the best high school I could have had and, pre- you know, preparation for character and storytelling and um, so I, I used community college as a kind of stepping stone and got into a small liberal arts college and then um, applied to NYU, to Tisch School of the Arts, to the gotcha. dramatic writing program. And, um, and I got in. Mm-hmm. And, um, and I kind of hit the ground running there uh, because I, I was just so hungry and, and ready for the opportunity. And I had stories to tell from the road. So my first screenplay... Um, 
uh, which I did in a, a, a you know screenwriting you know 101 class. I misunderstood the assignment. It was supposed to be a 10-page short by the end of the semester, but I, I turned in a, a full screenplay, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and uh, it was you know set in the South. It was kind of a, a, a you know a, a road story, and mm-hmm. my professor encouraged me to enter it in a nationwide, uh, a national screenwriting competition, which is is. Uh, no longer around, but it was called Focus, Films of College and University Students. Hmm. And I, I ended up becoming a finalist, and they flew me to L.A., and I ended up winning first place, which nice. was a, a first prize was a brand-new Nissan automobile, which huh. was, had a profound meaning to me, having come from the junkyard uh-huh. <laughs> and, and having uh, driven a lot of, a lot of junkers. So anyway... Um, I signed with the William Morris Agency at the time. I thought that script was going to sell because I was wined and dined, and it was a, a big deal. But it did not sell. It got me an agent, but I went back to tending bar and, and continuing schooling at NYU. Mm-hmm. I wrote my next screenplay in a, a master's class that was taught by Waldo Salt, Ring Lardner Jr., huh. and Ian McClellan Hunter, wow. all three of the Hollywood blacklisted screenwriting giants Mm -hmm. teaching this one class and that script that I wrote was called Crossroads and it was semi-autobiographical a blues story about a young white kid from the northeast who's uh, you know obsessed with the blues and Mm -hmm. goes on the road looking for Robert Johnson's lost song anyway I entered it in the same focus awards and it won first place again Hmm, nice very good um, I had sold the first car so I could keep going to school. Uh, <laughs> so now I had one I could keep, uh-huh. and and then I sold the script sold to Columbia Pictures, and it was in production before I, I graduated. Mm-hmm. So, you know, a lot of people said to me, "Well, that was like an overnight success," and and I always say, "Well, you weren't around during the six years when I was, you know, living mm-hmm. in a doorway in New Orleans." Yeah. No kidding. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> So let's dig in. Let's dig into your latest film, *The Highway Highwaymen*, starring Kevin Costner and Woody Harrelson. Maybe to start out, you can just give us a quick pitch or logline. What is that film all about? Um, you know, in 1934, when when uh, the the gangster legends Bonnie and Clyde were terrorizing America, J. Edgar Hoover and a 1,000 man dragnet couldn't catch them for two years, hmm. and Texas uh, turned to two retired Texas Rangers. Um, old-time Texas Rangers who came out of retirement, took up the hunt for Bonnie and Clyde. They had to make the transition from horse and Winchester to Ford V8 and machine rifles and mm. and track down modern-day gangsters in an era that had passed them by. I gotcha. And so how did you get involved with this project? Um, something like this coming out of Netflix, is that something that they have in their pipeline and then they bring on a writer? Is it something that you had an idea for and then brought to to them? Maybe you can talk about sort of the flow of that a little bit. Sure. Well, you know, I, I, I always write what I'm passionate about. Um, and, and, you know, I'm a big believer in, in uh, writing spec scripts. Mm-hmm. Um, and, the um, and and just you know not trying to crack the market or uh, and and I'm cautious about development deals although you know there are some good ones that come along but I believe that we writers can create our own own best projects and the Highwaymen is something I've wanted to do from an early age hmm. you know uh, the 1967 Arthur Penn film Bonnie and Clyde which you know <laughs> there's no disputing there's a watershed cultural touchstone and a movie that influenced so many great filmmakers um, and create, you know, opened the gate to a whole new era and reinvented cinema. Mm-hmm. Um, because I had a fascination with outlaws and gangsters, um, I went to see that movie at the drive-in as a little kid with my parents. And that really fired up my interest in Bonnie and Clyde. But when I dug into the true story, I realized that they were not Warren Beatty and Faye Dunaway. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that... I was kind of taken aback by how they were glorified when I learned more about who they really were. But more than that, I was I was just shocked that the representation of Texas Ranger Frank Hamer in that film uh, was was not only far off, but was a, a, a total injustice and an abomination and character assassination. Um, and the more I learned about Hamer, the more I felt like he was the real hero in that story. Hmm. And 
So I was always, you know, I grew up hoping someone would do that movie. It never happened. They never did it. And at a certain point, um, I decided it was time for me to do it. Hmm. So I, I wrote that script 16 years ago. I, I chose, I made a pact with myself that I would not do it if I did not get the blessing of Frank Hamer Jr., who was still alive and in his 90s. Um, and he would not take my phone call because he didn't want anything to do with Hollywood huh. after, after the, the defamation of his dad in that movie. In fact, he and his mother sued Warner Brothers and won a large settlement. Huh. Um, but I finally found a way into Frank, and he invited me to Austin, uh, where I am at the moment, uh, coming full circle. Uh -huh. And um, I went down there to seek his blessing. And when I told him how I felt, which was basically what I just told you, um, he shook my hand and said, I've been waiting for this for a long time, and I'll help you any way I can. And that's how it all started. Okay. Perfect, perfect. Let's just talk quickly about your writing process um, as you're going into a spec script like this. How much time do you spend? And it sounds like this is something you've been mulling over for many, many years, but how much time do you spend sort of in that outlining index card stage versus how much time do you spend actually opening up final draft and actually writing script pages? You know, it's, it's, it really, it, it varies from project to project for me, but mm -hmm. because I, I tend to gravitate toward historical drama, mm -hmm. Um, you know, it starts with the research, and what I love to do and, and what I feel is essential um, when you're writing historical uh, material um, is I just go so deep into the, into the history, and I go beyond the written material and, and do field work and get on the ground. Mm -hmm. And um, I travel, you know, I came back to Austin repeatedly to meet with the Hamer family. Um, I... I did a Bonnie and Clyde. Um, I, I basically followed the Bonnie and Clyde trail with three of the foremost uh, Bonnie and Clyde historians in the country. And I just, I researched to the point where it's just, I can't hold back anymore. Mm -hmm. And I make notes along the way and I know, okay, this is critical. This is an important scene. And I put together signposts mm -hmm. and I kind of hang the story on signposts without boxing myself in by over outlining and I, I like to write from you know one pivotal event you know so I basically I I'll know going in what my first act turning point is mm -hmm. what my midpoint is um, you know my, my loose act structure sure which which I hang on those historical beats mm -hmm. that, that tell the story um, but I like to give myself you know room to breathe and discover and to keep it exciting and sure. alive sure, sure. fluid so how can people see the Highwaymen? Do you know what the release schedule is going to be like? Yes. Yeah, so um, uh, it's going to open in select theaters on March 15th. Perfect. Uh, and then it's going to have its worldwide launch on Netflix on March 29th. Perfect. And so I'm very excited about it. It's, uh, you know, um, it's been a long journey for me and, and something that I'd love to say to to writers out there that, you know, just because you've had a, a script sitting on the shelf or in the drawer for, for many years, it's it's money in the bank. Mm -hmm. It's part of your portfolio. It's like your real estate portfolio. And um, don't let it go. Don't give up. I have to say I had a great producer, and every writer should be that fortunate and try to find that person in your life. Try to find that one producer who gets your work, who loves it, and will go fight battles for you. Mm -hmm. Because Casey Silver, who I've done multiple movies with now, you know, well, I'm, of course, I went and did a lot of other stuff during those 16 years. He never stopped pushing, fighting. It was set up at Universal with Redford and Newman. Hmm. It, it was at one point had Tommy Lee Jones, Liam Neeson. <laughs> he just kept mm -hmm. pushing. And finally, all roads led to Netflix mm -hmm. where we both had a relationship. And so, you know, as, as Kathy Bates' character, uh, Ma Ferguson says in the movie, never say die, mm -hmm. say damn, but don't say die. Yep. I got you. Well, congratulations getting this one done, John. Um, I really appreciate you taking some time out and coming on and talking with me today. Th thank you, Ashley. I enjoy your podcast, and uh, I want to, you know, wish the best to, to all writers out there. And uh, as, you know, Waldo Salt once said to me, the writer is king. Mm -hmm. uh, so good luck to all. Say thank you very much, John. Let's talk to you later. Thank you. Bye. Cheers. I just want to talk quickly about SYS Select.
It's a service for screenwriters to help them sell their screenplays and get writing assignments. The first part of the service is the SYS Select Screenplay Database. Screenwriters upload their screenplays along with a logline, synopsis, and other pertinent information like budget and genre, and then producers search for and hopefully find screenplays that they want to produce. Dozens of producers are in the system looking for screenplays right now. I launched this service at the beginning of this year and we've already started to see some success stories. You can check out SYS podcast episode 222 with Steve Deering. He was the first official success story to come out of the SYS Select database. You can learn more about all of this by going to sellingyourscreenplayselect.com. When you join SYS Select, you get access to the screenplay database that I just mentioned, along with all the other services that we're providing to SYS Select members. Those services include the monthly newsletter that goes out to our list of 400 producers who are actively seeking writers and screenplays. Each SYS Select member can pitch one screenplay in this monthly newsletter. We also are, have partnered with one of the premier paid screenwriting leads sites, so I can syndicate their leads to SYS Select members. There are lots of great paid leads coming in each week from our partner. Recently, we've been getting five to 10 high quality paid leads per week. These leads run the gamut. There's producers looking for a specific type of spec script to producers looking to hire a screenwriter to write up one of their ideas or properties. They're looking for shorts, they're looking for features, TV and web series pilots, all types of different projects. If you sign up for SYS Select, you'll get these eads emailed directly to you several times per week. Also, you can get access to the SYS Select forum where we will help you with your logline and query letter and answer any screenwriting related questions that you might have. Also in the forum are all the recorded screenwriting classes that I've done over the years, so you'll have access to all of those as well. The classes cover every part of the writing process from concept to outlining to the first act, second act, third act, as well as other topics like writing short films and pitching your projects in person. Once again, if this sounds like something you would like to learn more about, please go to sellingyourscreenplayselect.com. Again, that's sellingyourscreenplayselect.com. On the next episode of the podcast, I'm going to be interviewing Ben Edlund, the creator and current showrunner for the Amazon series, The Tick. He has an incredible story. He started out in high school, originally creating the Tick character for a comic book, and slowly he had success with it. And this has actually been produced as a TV show before, both as a live action and as an animated series. So we talk through his entire incredible journey with this character. So keep an eye out for that episode next week. Anyway, that's the show. Thank you for listening.